just wanted to, to um, make a few points and ask a couple of questions. Um, first of all, with, with regard to what Afaf was uh, saying, you know, I'm a Malaysian and, and I thank you very much for saying that Malaysians are uh, nice people and kind people. Um, but having said that, and also with reference to what John was saying about how we need to take up the cause of oppression and racism, um, our problem in Malaysia is that we're inconsistent about these things. You know, we take up the Palestinian cause, but other causes we are relatively silent. Um, for example, the, the, uh, pro the problem that Yemenis are facing, that protracted uh, war. Um, there's hardly any outrage expressed in Malaysia about that. Um, we've not been very, uh, we've been by no means as active with regard to the oppression of Rohingyas as we are about um, um, Palestinians. So I think we need to, to be more consistent. Otherwise, otherwise it just looks like um, we um, are, you know, um, how, how should I put it, um, using this for political mileage, at least among some circles. Um, so that's one issue. Um, but the other thing I wanted to, and this is more directed to, to John, our media in Malaysia, we tend to look at the conflict in superficial terms. Um, as a conflict, and not in the in in the context of settler colonialism, um, and um, and we intend to only speak about occupation. But what I wanted to ask John is, can we look at the situation in 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 Palestine in terms of a kind of double colonialism, that Israel itself is a colonial settler state, that's one form of colonialism, and the other form is that the West Bank and Gaza are uh, occupied uh, territories. So you have a, a double form of colonialism. And my last uh, question is, um, you know, I, 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 I'm interested in social theory. I teach social theory. I teach Marxist theory and have, you know, great sympathy for it. And in, in the Malay world, we have a hundred years old tradition of um, thinking about the relevance um, in a positive manner uh, of socialism for Islam. So you have kind of a Muslim or Islamic socialist um, orientation that's, uh, that started to be articulated since the, 90, the, 19, the teens, uh, more than 100 years. So I was horrified to, <laughs> to discover many years ago, you know, in my readings uh, and preparing for my courses about Marxist Zionism, um, which you know, to me is a, it's a horrendous misuse of Marxism. Um, and I'm familiar with you know, the early thinkers like Bear, Borokov and, and others. But I'd like to ask John, is there um, does a form of Marxist Zionism continue today? And, and what form does it, uh, does it take? And how has it changed since the last hundred years? Thank you. Right. Do you, shall I respond to... You wish me to respond? Yes, yes, please, please, John. Yeah, thank you, oh, Professor. Thank you, Professor. There are big, there are big, lots of big questions there. First of all, on the qu question of consistency, uh, the professor is right, but this is not just a problem in Malaysia. This is a problem everywhere in the world. <laughs> um, uh, uh, it's not easy to be totally consistent, um, and people, of course tend to focus on some struggles rather than another. But I, I think uh, that essentially we need solidarity with all the struggles of the oppressed. So I agree with what you're saying. Just today, um, this morning, uh, I was involved, been involved in the initial stages of organizing with a, a Saudi in, uh, uh, citizen in, um, in Dublin, uh, an exile, a protest about the war in the Yemen that we will hold at the Saudi Arabian uh, uh, embassy. And you are quite right. And um, uh, you are also right, 100% right about the fate of the uh, Rohingyas and what is happening in Myanmar and the resistance to oppression there is very important. So, um, uh, um, you know, I... Uh, I, I, I agree with you with your point, Professor. Um, the superficiality of the media is again an international problem. Um, there are 
two aspects to this. I think in general, the, me the, the media, which is run as a business, is interested in selling newspapers by any means necessary or selling their, uh, you know, their TV station or whatever by any means necessary and so on. And they're not really, they don't really want the public to understand issues. They want them just to respond uh, to sound bites. Um, and uh, uh, so there is a general superficiality. There's also a specific narrative about um, the, the, uh, the situation in Palestine, the struggle of the Palestinian people and so on. There's a specific narrative which shows this as a conflict between two groups that can't get on with one another, perhaps over religion, which I think is completely misses the point of what is happening, or perhaps over just you know, old animosities. And then it enables, therefore, the Western countries to pose as being neutral between this and solving the problem. When they're not, which they're not doing, they're supporting um, Israel, essentially, and that for the reasons that I was explaining. This is an old thing. Um, in Ireland, we had this as well. There was people, may, you know, a sectarian conflict between mainly Protestant unionists in in Northern Ireland and mainly Catholic nationalists. This was a situation created by the partition of Ireland and the maintenance of British rule in the six counties in the northern in the north of Ireland. But it was always treated in the British media as what's the matter with these Irish Catholics and Protestants? We stop Catholics and Protestants stop fighting people in an advanced country like Britain. Uh, you know, hundreds of years ago, why are they still quarrelling about it in Ireland, as if they disagreed about whose whose version of Christianity was correct? It was never about that. It was always about national oppression. But that narrative was played out, and that narrative has played has been played out in uh, relation to um, <coughs> to uh, uh, to uh, Zionism, to Israeli apartheid, and uh, and so on. And um, uh, the the uh, yes, there is as it were a kind of d a double colonialism. I think so, and I think that um, in in my view, you know, the occupation is of course wrong, but it is not the root of the problem. It is built into Zionist apartheid that it has to try and ethnically cleanse the area. And will always be looking to do so. It is looking in its way, I use the awful term, for its own final solution to the problem. By uh, um, what it says, I mean, it's interesting the language that they use during the war. We want permanent peace and quiet. In other words, they want no resistance whatsoever. That's what they expect. And they're obviously never going to get that from the Palestinian people, that they get no resistance. And so they will always see themselves as justified in driving people out, in settling new lands, in making Gaza and Liverpool and so on. Um, the question uh, uh, is interesting. The Mar Marxist Zionism, look, uh, all ideologies and all religions and all theories have been used for all sorts of purposes. Uh, Christianity has been used at various points in time to justify slavery, apartheid, um, uh, uh, fascism, all, sort, all sorts of things. And sadly, the same is true of Marxism. Many forms of Marxism has often been used to justify in what I think are, um, you know, uh, appalling regimes. I'm, I'm not, a, not a supporter of the Soviet Union under Stalin. Um, I'm not a supporter of China. I think what is happening to the Uyghur people in China is uh, utterly unacceptable. Um, as for Marxist Zionism, yes, it did exist um, with Boroshov and others. I think it was always profoundly wrong, but I think there's very little of it left because I think the way in which Zionism has developed has meant that the um, uh, ugly face of Zionism, the brutality of Zionism, has become clearer and clearer to people. And the, the illusions that were there 
in, you know, Marxist and have faded. I don't know. I don't really know any Marxist now who would support, or people I would consider in any way remotely serious Marxists, who, who would support Zionism. And myself, the major, in my lifetime, the major Marxist influence on me was from uh, 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 a man, um, original name was Egal Gluckstein, um, used the name when he was in England of Tony Cliff, um, but who was a Palestinian Jew. He was born in Palestine. He came first to Ireland and then to England, uh, and he was an anti-Zionist Marxist Palestinian Jew. So, uh, but I don't think, I don't think there's much of it now. Sorry, a long answer, but there were big questions. <laughs>